Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. What are we going to do with ourselves this fine evening? Well, picture is worth a thousand words. Eh? 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 That's right. We're going to get sweaty and oily. What I got here, if and you look past the mess, rotary joints, two. That means we can make a hemisphere. Proportional valve, two. That means we got proportionality on both of these. Or figure, I'll show you. So what can we do with two of these hydraulic bartending robot joints? Well, we can make a proof of concept. First things first, look at this workbench. Shameful, shameful, I know. But the problem is, if you clean something up and you turn your back, it accumulates junk. So, we're going to clean this up real quick and keep an eye on it. Now, in deference to you OCD clean workspace freaks, that's a little more reasonable, I hope. I got to call out and thank very much Bad Pit. I've been looking, I put, you know, I've been asking you guys, hey, there's a piece of scrap, proportional valve, keep me in mind. And uh, this came out of a basket case mill in Tennessee that closed down, of course, probably moved it to Indonesia. This is a proportional valve. It is, of course, it's closed center. And my pump is a gear pump, so it has to be open center. But what we'll do is we'll just let it scream over the relief. I think I maybe might do a teardown on this. And I'll explain all that hydraulic terminology in, in detail. But it's not exactly the right kind of valve, but we can cobble it together. As you can see, the wires kind of chowdered up. Uh, this thing has led a hard life, of course. Uh, pulp mills, <laughs> wood mills, man oh man, they gotta get every plug nickel out of every penny. So, I mean, tight. And the guys that work there, they keep shit running. You can't, you wouldn't believe the stuff. But with any luck, this will still work or it'll be close enough that we can still get it to chooch. First things first, we're going to check the coils. And the thing that is so special about the proportional valve is that the solenoid isn't on or off. Um, so when you have a solenoid, you design it for on or off. And a lot of times it has a pull-in coil and then a switch in there and it changes over to hold in if it's a big coil. In this case, because you don't saturate the core and it draws a lot of current that means it needs to be super hot in this case it's proportional to the voltage that you put in so it'll move that it'll move that valve proportionally it's not just on or off it, you know you give it five volts it draws a certain amount of current so that means that these solenoids have to be very special they have to be way overbuilt in order to withstand the current that is required to not saturate the core. And 28. So good news, they all have the same 28. Now I do not know the operating voltage that this is designed to run at. Best guess for me would be 24 volts. But we're very much in luck here because we have a manual override on these valves. So we can manually override it see the distance it travels and then give it voltage until we travel that same distance that will ensure well that'll tell us exactly what the operating voltage is and the other thing is we have these little pigtails now this one's chowdered right to fuck so we won't use that until we fix it but essentially what we're, we have here is a current transformer and we don't want to go open circuit um, because the voltage could so go through the roof however we're running it on DC, so uh, just when I connect it and disconnect it, it might get a voltage spike. But what I can do is I will put some, some resistors in there across here so that we don't get a big voltage spike. Actually, because it's DC, I don't, I'd, I'd still get a voltage spike with a resistor, but it'd bleed off. So let's just do this. Huh? We'll start off pretty much 12 volts. There's half an amp going through there. So oh, nothing happening in there. Doesn't even overcome the detent. Even if I overcome the detent, it still pushes back. 
and the current's maxed out there so we're just we're just controlling it with a voltage nothing happening there so this might be AC no it wouldn't be AC because uh, you want to be able to control it so it, it's got to be DC there we are 30 volts almost an amp and not moving well time for plan B looks like I was a little anemic on my estimate of first you know at first blush you don't want to blow the thing up these yeah they're hard to come by so we need a DC power supply with more grunt that's why pencils have welders nothing beats a stick arc welder for DC steady DC power supply with some major grunt the only problem of course is you can't vary the voltage so this is a big old yeah real stat we can vary the voltage that way uh, I'm figuring this should only draw a few amps so we shouldn't burn this up in, in too quick of an order and essentially this is just a potentiometer if you look here you can even see it's inwards or outwards and all you do you put in power put in power here and then power comes out here on the wiper and depending how far you get from here you'll get it's oh no that has to be a voltage divider ah yeah this will work fuck it so we got the welder ground clamp clamp to the table of course steel table neo magnet and the wire and just clamp that on there gotta love magnets man and then we'll put the positive to here give her what for oh look at this huh are we barbarians no fusible link <laughs> 20 gauge solid wire stranded. I'll just stick her on there. Uh huh. That's right. Get in the hole. Go to your home. Okay. And they're cranked right up to 11 right off the get go. We don't want that. Corn duck. So wow, that's drawing uh, an amp already. It's not pulling in. Why not? Oh, it's warm though. Oh yeah, there we go. You can hear it buzzing. Well, let's give her a little more jam. Oh, maybe boiling the oil out of it or something. Let's see her. Oh my God, it's so fucking tight. Let's get some sparky, sparky action. What the fuck? Why are you smoking? Uh oh. Mas problema. I don't know if you caught that scent. No, it's not my usual twisted steel and sex appeal. That's the blue smoke monster and burning oil. Bad combo. In my defense, you look at this. What could possibly go wrong? I mean, I got a fusible link and everything. As an aside, more call this a pula melt. Well, see where the schmoo is coming from. Come on in. Ready. Okay, be right up. Pizza night. Woohoo! Right, the blood sugar boost coupled with the psychic cries of anguish from the future really helped me realize. I wasn't being very smart. First clue, look at the size of these solenoids. Tiny. What's going on? Well, there's a closed center, so there'll always be pressure. These are just actuating on, uh, they're just controlling pilot flow, pilot pressure to control the actual valve. So this actually needs pressure in here to get this valve to actuate. This is just controlling a little bit of flow, just a little bit and that pushes the valve over. So that's why it's not moving over, but we can test it by putting air in the port and hopefully that'll get it to chooch over. So we'll just take that, ah, uh, ah, uh, not three cars here. The walk of shame. Okay, let's test this again. Got the amps cranked way up. And 
should pull that valve in. We're at four volts. Ten volts. Fourteen volts. Huh. Should pull that. It is getting warm. Twenty five volts, thirty volts. Not moving. I can't see anything physically moving. But it is getting warmer. Pulling one amp. Let's uh Ah, oh, we'll put her back in, put some air pressure to it, see if we can get some air chooching out of there. Now to my novice eye, that looks like dash 8 ORB and dash 12 ORB. O-ring boss, and you can tell it's O-ring boss. Because, so I'm told, because uh, it's got a seat for the O-ring. Uh, here, here's the cock for dolly here. Dash 12 to JIC male, dash 12. I just need an adapter to get some air in there. Now, those of you in the know will recognize this stovepipe abortion. <laughs> I keep this around because it's got pretty much every fitting you ever need in order to get stuff into somewhere. So, it actually has dash 12 female on there, all the way to quarter inch. I just keep this in the bottom of the toolbox and uh, then I don't have to go rummage it around for the right fitting. Because, yeah, you know what a pain in the ass that is. I'll just take an air fit in here, stick her in there. Oh, oh, oh. Buy these by the gross Milton M style, and of course, son of a diddly. Robbed her out of an air tool there. What are you gonna do? It, it just doesn't end. All right, let's light this candle contact. All right, we got some bypass flow there, obviously. A little bit yeah, in that port. Let's uh, turn it on here. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Oh, wow. Two volts and it opened up. Spraying smooth everywhere. Well, that's great. Oh, and the, look, the valve. The valve. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, you can. Woohoo! Woohoo! Okay, let's plug that guy off and we'll see if we can get the valve to actuate all the way. Okay, 8 ORB to dash 6 JIC, male, male. Ah, oh. <laughs> Ha! Proof positive yet again that one must never throw anything away. Okay, let's watch that actuate. We're at 3.7 volts, 20, 200 milliamps. Quite likely I don't have enough pressure to actually get that to actuate. I only have uh, 60 pounds of air. So let's uh, bump that up to 120, see if we can get actuate the, the whole way. Cordact. All right, that's her, 140 PSI. That's right, I made a couple small modifications myself. Let's give her what for. Oh yeah, look at that. That gives me an idea. The best part is that's only at five volts. Fucking A man, five volts is fuck all. 220, yeah, 220 milliamps. <laughs> we are cooking with gasoline. Well, let's test out the other ones. Check. Oh. Check. Nasty. Get a little smarter here. Fucking A. And it's only five volts. Five volts. That's what our. Ah, oh, you fucking son of a fuck. It just doesn't end. And this is so fucking awesome. Because if you're at all familiar with industrial hydraulics, you know that if you want a proportional system, a hydraulic system, 
basically call up Rex Roth, start cutting POs for 10 grand and don't stop till it's done. Uh, this, what we're going to do is we're going to use an Arduino, uh, yeah, more than likely an Arduino to control this. I've got a GitHub uh, account set up. It's Mr. Bumblefuck. So I, I would appreciate if anybody's interested in doing some Pixie Wrangling, uh, check it out. What we need for this, I believe, just, just at a cursory glance, is we're going to have four inputs, tactile switches, essentially you could use a joystick, and one potentiometer as inputs. The potentiometer is going to control the uh, pulse width ramp up. So when we hit a button, the Arduino will recognize that and it will output on a pin a pulse width modulated signal that will go to just a, a, a simple, uh, amp, not an amplifier, but a, a BJT, um, a current device, and it'll just send, you know, five volts to these things under a pulse width modulation. And we want each one to ramp up and ramp down. So when you turn it on, it doesn't go to five volts right away. It doesn't go full on. It goes, you know, it ramps up, say, over the course of a second, two seconds, but that's adjustable via the pot. So five inputs that control pulse width modulated outputs. That's what we're looking for. Now, if nobody's interested in that, I'll drag my carcass upstairs and, and do it. However, I'd rather be in the shop doing what I'm, well, sort of good at and letting somebody else shine at what they're real good at. So if you're interested, go and check out the GitHub or upload or how uh, do a force pull or some, whatever the fuck it is. I, we'll figure it out anyway. Okay, next up, we're going to machine the uh, brackets for this. That'll be in the next video, probably next week. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. Keep your dick in a vice. Actually, second thought for the Pixie Wrangling. If you want to spec out, I don't have one here, but if you want to spec out a potentiometer joystick and then have that control the pulse width modulated depend, uh, depending on, you know, how far you send the stick, that'd be even cooler because the, the way I explained it was just to make sure it wasn't jerky, you know, it would ramp in and ramp out. But if you could actually control it, that'd be freaking awesome. Then if you tell me what joystick to order, uh, yeah, fucking skook them as frig. Woo. Bad pit. Thank you once again. I mean, we all get a little gamey. We miss a shower three. Thanks, buddy.